Hi, and welcome back to the Stack Tutorial. In this video, I'll show you how to work with question variables. So for this video, I've created this simple integration example to find the integral of 3 times x minus 1 to the power of minus 4. So first, let me show you how I created this question. First, I gave the question a question name. Then I wrote a question text using slash int for an integration symbol and slash math rm for an upright d. Then under input, I put in the model answer for now using lowercase c as my constant of integration. And then I created a very simple potential response tree that just checks that the student's answer it's algebraically equivalent to the teacher's answer. Now, for more complex questions like this, you want to avoid having to type in things like the model answer again and again. So for this, we can use question variables. At the very top in the question variables box, you can define any variables you want to use throughout the question. This is done in the language Maxima which has a maybe slightly unconventional way of defining variables, namely by colon. So for example, aa colon 2 assigns the value 2 to the variable aa. We'll let exp for expression be the expression we're integrating. That is 3 times x minus 1 to the power of minus 4. Again, using asterisks explicitly for multiplication. And then we'll let TA for teacher's answer be the model answer. And we could just type this out manually, but there is an easier way, namely through Maxima's function int, which takes an expression and a variable and returns the indefinite integral. Note that it does not, by default, include a constant of integration, so we have to add it in manually. In general, it's good to use variable names that have more than one character, as single character variables are meant for student input. It's also good practice to end every line with a semicolon, but this is not required by stack. Now that we've defined these variables, we can replace any mentioning of, for example, the model answer with just TA. So under input and the model answer, we just have TA. And in the potential response tree, we can just check ANS1 against TA. We can also use our expression variable in the question text. So we don't have to type this out explicitly. However, we can't just write exp as that would just show the letters exp. So instead we use curly brackets at at curly brackets to display a maxima expression, in this case exp. It's good practice to use question variables often, as they save time, reduce the risk of error, and make it easy for you to change the question later if, for example, you decide to change some of these constants. That concludes this tutorial. You should now be able to use question variables in Stack.